The research analysis that you and I are about to delve in tonight represents even a far greater amount of what we may call phytopharmaceuticals or phytochemicals than what is listed here. These are just the primary ones. But for example, uh, we're looking at also echinacea, um, uh, uh, which is mentioned as well in regard to carpal tunnel syndrome. And we'll look at Icarian, but some unique perspectives in reference to Icarian, which I, was, I learned myself. Now, even though you see resveratrol, epigallagatogen, gallate, quercetin, basically, uh, the genistein, and which we're not going to get a chance to cover, but give an example of how intriguing the information is. Genistein was shown to show promise or promising outcomes in reference to women uh, who basically postmenopausal because it helped mitigate some of the effects of low estrogen in regard to maintaining tendon strength or tendon repair. Incredible, incredible research. The links will be there as well. And also too, I know the next question usually followed up with or normally gets followed up with is basically the dosages used in these particular studies. And that is in the full research article itself, which I'm surprised did not gain better or get better traction in more of the public media uh, arena because the number of individu individuals uh, that suffer from tendon related issues is just numerous, numerous. So here's a research article that basically is looking at the pilot or exploratory uh, studies, which has a huge swath or impact in regard to help alleviate a plethora of uh, negative ailments in reference to tendon issues. But without further ado, let us begin. So here we go. Modulation of inflammation by plant-derived nutraceuticals in tendonitis. Now keep in mind again, we're only gonna briefly look at a few of the highlights and even some of the combination formulas that have, that have yielded beneficial outcomes significantly in regard to the pilot or exploratory studies that were accumulated in this particular article itself. Plant-derived nutraceuticals have been shown to act as multi-targeting agents against tendonitis via various antioxidant and anti-inflammatory mechanisms, where they were able to specifically modulate numerous signaling pathways, blah, 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 thus down-regulating inflammatory process. This review discusses the utility of herbal nutraceuticals that have demonstrated safety and tolerability as anti-inflammatory agents for the prevention and treatment of tendonitis through the suppression of catabolic signaling pathways. All right, now I'm gonna take a few of the highlights out and then I'm gonna show you basically the more comprehensive look at all of them together where you can basically pause it. I think we're videotaping a 4K and read through it on your own. So to proceed as follows. Icarin, Icarian, Icarian, however you wanna pronounce it. Icarian is the most abundant flavonoid in horny goat weed. I know you can call it basically uh, I think it's bishop hat, uh, fairy wings. I don't know if that's part of the uh, epimedium and grandiflorum uh, family per se. I know it's part of the epidemium family, the wood aspect. Uh, you can call it uh, uh, basically tons of different names, but bishop hat and stick. So horny goat we did, and henceforth, let us proceed. And has been demonstrated to positively affect bone metabolism, regeneration, and density. In the study, flavonoids have been shown to also support the healing and repair of tendon after rotator cuff reconstruction. You see what I mean in the many dimensions of this particular research? And here we're just looking at one plant compound or basically a carin uh, from epidemium, epimedium grandiflorum. I don't want to keep it saying epidemium, epimedium grandiflorum. Uh, that yielded a benefit that I just learned myself to proceed. Uh, rotator cuff reconstruction in rats in vivo, mainly by stimulating the synthesis of collagen type one and two. Moreover, the inhibition of bone loss and the promotion of osteogenesis and angiogenesis as shown by vascular staining clearly demonstrated the enhanced CD3-1 plated endothelial cell adhesion molecule and VEGF expression, VEGF expression as a sign for intrinsic neovascularization around the tendon insertion site through the Icarian treatment are assumed to be crucial components for tendon bone healing. Who would have ever thought from horny goat weed? Warm Bishop's hat. You choose a name. 
there's no laws. <laughs> well, it basically represents on this background, a Karen represents another flavonoid with therapeutic potential when it comes to tendinitis and tendon associated issues, but still cellular mechanisms have to be investigated in the future. All right, another highlight. And this one's a reference to basically carpal tunnel syndrome. This is another plant compound or phytopharmaceutical, which I just learned yielded benefit in reference to this potential um, ailment itself to proceed. Moreover, another clinical trial, Echinacea and Gustafolia extracts were dietary, sup uh, were dietary supplemented combined with alpha-lipoic acid and conjugated linoleic acid, which were used for the treatment strategy of carpal tunnel syndrome patients and compared to ESWT, whether I believe is extracorporeal, corporeal, not corporeal, corporeal, extracorporeal, corporeal, ah, shockwave therapy. You get the point. Uh, Echinacea agnostifolia is known to exhibit strong antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant properties, as well as immune modulating activity, which most of us know it as. But these effects have previously been demonstrated to be partly exerted by modulation of major inflammatory pathways in which someone pass over. This study, which compared the effects of echinacea and gustafolia containing dietary supplements to extracor uh, I can't pronounce it, extracorporeal, uh, basically extracorporeal uh, shockwave therapy treatment of carpal tunnel patients showed that both strategies revealed improvements in pain and functionality in comparable manner, indicating the potential of nutraceuticals to be embedded in future treatment strategies since they represent a comfortable method for the management of carpal tunnel syndrome and under tendinopathies. Now, that is pretty amazing because who would have guessed this one particular species of echinacea can yield benefit in combined with CLA, and I believe it was also alpha lipoic acid, in regard to helping uh, improve the outcome in reference to carpal tunnel syndrome. And lots of people feel helpless in regard to suffering from that particular ailment. And here is great pilot research that can yield an incredible outcome, just needs to be delved in a little deeper and carried it in more human trials to validate the information. All right, now to proceed. Now I'm gonna move from the screen a little bit so I can highlight these. This is basically what we're looking at right now is the particular studies, which are basically are also listed in the article itself, or I should say research analysis. Here you see the avocado and soybean as saponophilaboids, the ASU, uh, sapon, sapon, uh, phalagols. I'm not gonna butcher that anymore. Boswellia, uh, boswellia. The bromelain, you see the studies as far as the positive outcomes, in reference to basically also where you may want to look at the days, the dosages, and so on and so forth. That's really what I wanted to bring your attention to because it gives such promise with such basically readily available phytochemicals, or if you want to call them phytopharmaceuticals, go for it. I uh, think curcuminoids, tons of research. Uh, basically, the EGCG, which many people may recommend, uh, recommend. recognize from green tea, when we look at the epigallic catagen galley and shows you the dosages, the days used, so on and so forth. You see what I mean why it's so exciting? And basically all the way down the line, and hang on, let's see, I think I dropped one of the pages here to follow along with you. Da, da, da. And then we look at, yeah, there we are. We follow the other page right there. We are looking at the flavonoids as well as there's Veritrol. And of course, the top, I don't want to pass up, the Echinacea and Gustafolia. And so that really yields a lot of intriguing possibilities. And I wanted to leave that up there for you so you could basically just look at it and then just basically pause it. I'll keep this in 4K when it fully renders, which it takes 24 to 48 hours. And that could give you, yield you some tools to alleviate potentially, if it carries out the same effect in humans, um, the potential to basically helping in individuals who are suffering from such ailments. Now, what we're also going to do here, I'm going to bring it back. What we're looking at is the formulas. Now, I don't want to go into each formula, for example, like the first one, Boswellia, you see the combinations that they used as well uh, in the resins and so on and so forth, in particular brands. 
And you look at Achilles tendonitis and epicondylitis. Uh, interesting outcomes, which you normally think about as far as Achilles tendonitis. Uh, and basically, you look down below, you see, for example, the Kirkman Longa, they go up through several brands. I'm not a big uh, individual, I like to drop uh, brand names per se. So I'm going to pass kind of over a lot of it, but I want to leave it up so you can make your own judgment call. And then also, too, you see, for example, down below, the bromelain mixed in with other supplements, including arginine, collagen, vitamin C, MSM, and so on and so forth for, again, and Achilles issues. And then also, too, you see the bromelain, l arginine, l uh, ketoglutarate, uh, the hydrolyzed collagen one, too, and basically with rotator cuff tears and so on and so forth. So that yields you incredibly interesting uh, curiosities uh, in looking at the combinations that may have had a synergistic effect in yielding positive outcomes to uh, tendon issues. Many of these, again, with Achilles tendon uh, as well, rotated, rotated cuff tears, I think it was an animal study, and so on and so forth, that yields promise and hope for individuals, basically as, without being redundant, suffer from some such ailments. And especially a lot of the athletes out there as well, but just also too, carpal tunnel syndrome, in people that just have that repetitive motion day in and day out, that don't have the option of staying home per se, may be able to yield some benefit in regard to helping them along. I would never guess that Ganesha and uh, in combination with uh, CLA and basically alpha lipoic acid. But the links to that research is there. And I would like to go into more detail in reference to each combination formula. In herb itself, for example, like the genistein, which I was fascinated in regard to helping alleviate negative outcomes in regard to tendon issues in postmenopausal females. And they gave a beautiful explanation to why they tend to be more prone to tendon issues uh, in menopause due to your tendons to be often low estrogen levels. So that's just one of the tools for the individual. Uh, basically, provided these studies translate well to larger trials, tools to be free and hopefully free from pain. Again, Ralph Church Channel signing off. Gratitude for the great collection of research that the researchers uh, uh, basically took time to put together. I would have liked for it to see to have more traction in more uh, the public arena. But then again, that's what we're here for. And I'll links for you so you can follow on your own. And I need to say it each time. And I mean it each time. I am greatly humbled that you watch. Look forward to see y'all next time. Ralph Sanya. Catch you next time. See you then. Bye.